Thanks for checking out this video that is all about what is coming to Shutter in April. Yes, uh, I actually signed up with Shutter to get onto their list for media uh, so that they would just send me any sort of press releases and I already got my first press release from them, so awesome. So I just wanna do these videos when I can for anyone who has Shutter or anyone who's potentially thinking about getting Shutter to kind of highlight, hey, what's coming up in the next month, uh, movies and shows wise that's kind of like worth talking about. So this is for what's coming out in April. Uh, and the day I'm putting this up, people get excited because tomorrow, tomorrow, Joe Bob Briggs, the last drive-in with Joe Bob Briggs. If people don't know about Joe Bob Briggs, look him up, look up the trailer for the show. Basically, he's like a late night uh, movie host, horror movie host, and he just kind of like gives extra information about certain films and jokes around a little bit in between instead of having commercials. So, super cool. Um, so, let's dig into it already. So, one thing they want they pointed out, there's a show that's coming to Shudder on April 8th, and it is called The Haunted. And it apparently is a TV show based on Ed and Lorraine Warren cases. So, they're, you know, the, the subject matter for movies like The Conjuring, The Conjuring 2, Annabelle, stuff like that. So, if people are interested in that, that's one. Um... They are pushing Lizzie, a movie called Lizzie. It has Chloe Savigny in it. Um, Savini, Savigny, and Kristen Stewart. Those are the big names. Um, this is their big one they're pushing. Uh, it's available April 11th. And it says it's a, uh, a social outcast living a claustrophobic life that's ready to boil over in its dark, moody retelling of the notorious 1892 axe murder of the Borden family in Fall River, Mass or Fall River Massachusetts. Already in slip, I guess. But yeah, people who are familiar with the Lizzie Borden ordeal, that's what this is going to be. So that's one to keep an eye out for. Monster Party is another one they're really highlighting. This one's available April 25th. And it has Robin Tunney in it. That's the only name I really recognize. She was from The Craft, one of the women in The Craft. Three small-time burglars pose as caterers for a fancy dinner party at an extravagant mansion. But their plan for the perfect heist goes horribly wrong when they discover that the family and their guests are actually a support group of recovering serial killers. Yeah, that one sounds interesting to me. I will definitely check that out. I... I'm mm, on the Lizzie one, maybe, maybe not. I know a lot about the story. It doesn't interest me that much because I, I've heard about it so much. So I'm in the middle on the Lizzie one. Definitely want to check out Monster Party and the Haunted one, not for me. I don't really like ghost stories, haunted house things, things like that. Every now and then, but for the most part, not my thing. Uh, then they're pushing the fact that the last drive-in with Joe Bob Briggs starts. Now, this isn't just a one-time deal. In the past, they were doing... Uh, just kind of like a special thing with him. It's much more than that right now. He's doing um, a weekly show. It'll be every Friday night starting at 9 p.m. It'll be double features. Uh, from what I understand, it's going nine weeks. And then after that, hopefully, there's enough uh, support that they'll renew for another season or whatever they want to call it. So um, double feature every Friday night starting at 9, starting tomorrow from when I put this up. Tomorrow. Uh, yeah, so that's what the last drive-in is. I'm very excited. They're doing a halfway to Halloween thing, which is going to be awesome. This is avail uh, bleh, available April 1st, so from the get-go. So next week, people, be ready for this. They are putting up the first five Halloween movies. Halloween's one through five. Yes! Season of the Witch is in there, Halloween 3. My favorite of them. I mean, obviously, the first Halloween is amazing, but Season of the Witch is kind of my sweet spot gets me right here where it's a movie that's like not a good movie but it's fun because it's not good you know what i'm saying so they're calling that halfway to halloween because they're saying we're basically halfway to halloween so watch all these halloween movies to get you excited we're getting there so that's cool i like that they're doing that also dropping april 1st basic instinct okay i'm not going to go into descriptions of all of these only if i think they need it people you know about basic basic instinct i've seen it it's a good film i don't know i mean it is horror to a degree but it's not like extreme horror um good film cloverfield if you like it you like it i don't it's it, there's way too much movement with the camera 
I'm not a fan of that. It literally was making me feel ill when I watched the film. There's also some stuff in it that really doesn't make sense to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, we can talk more about that down in the comments if you want to on Cloverfield, but I'm just not a big fan. Uh, people know that too. Dead Silence. That's, that's Here's another one. This is, this is one done by James Wan. Uh, it was like a puppet, like a ventriloquist and, and like possessed puppet type thing. Um, people really hated it. I saw it a few years ago and I was just like, all right, let's see. It's not that bad, but I, I did go into it with the expectation of it being like terrible. So it's not terrible. I'd say it's worth one watch. So go ahead. Uh, the Legend of Hell House. This is a 1973 film. Um, a millionaire hires a team of paranormal investigators to determine whether his newly acquired mansion is haunted. I've seen it. It is a good film. I would recommend that one. There's a lot of older stuff that I feel like people don't gravitate to now nowadays that you should definitely check out because it is good. Legend of Hell House is a good one. Race with the Devil, also from 1975. Don't know about this, so let me read this. After two vacationing couples accidentally witness a satanic cult's human sacrifice, they find themselves being pursued by the devil worshippers. Okay. No Peter Fonda. There's a name I recognize. Peter Fonda's in it. Um, that's one that I might check out. That sounds kind of interesting. Then dropping April 8th, we have one called Three Women. It's from 1977, and Robert Altman is in it. Know that name. Three very different women come together at a spa for the elderly and infirmed. One becomes wrapped up in the life of another and surprises the others with how far she will go to keep their relationship intact. Shelley Duvall and Sissy Spacek are in it, so the pedigree of acting in it, great. So I do think I'll be trying to check out that one. Also from 1997, The Car, and this one's also... All the ones I'm saying right now are coming out April 8th, and then when there's another date, I'll tell you what that is. So The Car from 1977. When a small town is terrorized by an, by an indestructible, de demonically possessed car, it's up to the sheriff to stop it. Yes, please. It sounds absurd. It sounds interesting. It sounds like it could be fun. Sign me up. I'm going to do that one. The Haunted. I already talked about that one. Uh, that one's 1991. Let me see if there are any big names in it. No, no big names, really. Tales from the Crypt, 1972. Three Tales of Terror based on stories. Well, we don't need to do that one. It's it's an anthology, basically. If people are familiar with Tales from the Crypt, that's what it is. Um, April 15th. These are the movies coming out April 15th on there. Blew My Mind, the color blue. It's from 2017, so it's relatively new. Mm, Bruce Campbell's in it. I feel like it's a mandatory gotta see for me because Bruce Campbell, I love Bruce Campbell, which I'm going to be meeting him in the first weekend of October, I believe, at Monster Mania 44, I think it is. Uh, blew my mind. 15-year-old Mia's teenage rebellion takes an unexpected turn when her body begins to transform into something not quite human. Sounds good. I'll definitely check it out. Like I said, Bruce Campbell, gotta. Uh, 2017 release Psychopaths, the paths of multiple serial killers cross over one single blood-soaked night. That sounds like a great premise. I will definitely check that one out. Um, no names that I recognize in that one, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I will check that out. So the, here are now films dropping on April 22nd. Uh, Dead Birds, it's a 2005 release. A group of Confederate soldiers hole up in an abandoned plantation after robbing a bank and find themselves at the mercy of supernatural forces. Henry Thomas is in it, who was in uh, The Haunting of Hill House, which I'm watching currently. I know I'm a little late to that, but I'm loving it at the moment. Um, people know him most as Elliot from E.T., blah, blah, blah. But I, I knew him mainly from Suicide Kings. Great movie with... Um, why am I blanking? Christopher Walken in it. Uh, really good movie. That's the only big name in it, Henry Thomas, but uh, Dead Birds. Doesn't sound like anything I'm really going to check out, to be honest. Um, eh. uh, 2017 release called Most Beautiful Island. An undocumented woman struggling in, Nor in New York City is offered an opportunity she can't refuse, but soon discovers she's involved in a dangerous game. Mm, maybe. Oh, Larry Fessenden is in it. I like Larry Fessenden. 
he does a lot for the horror community by the way he does he puts a lot into film he's not just an actor he writes he directs he does all sorts of stuff uh then april 29th there is a series of pusher films pusher i'll just read you the first one and then there's the two sequels uh 1996 release of the original pusher this is a nicholas winding refn one which i probably won't see for that reason and i'll read you the description i'll tell you why Frank's life as a drug dealer is perfect until the police catch him en route to deliver heroin. Before he can be arrested, he dumps the smack, but his troubles are not over, for the buyer demands his money back. So I'm assuming that that's more of like a horror because of extreme violence and brutality. Um, so, but, oh, ah, but Mads Mikkelsen is in it. I really love Mads Mikkelsen. He does such a wonderful job. If people haven't seen Hannibal, the show Hannibal that was on Fox, Mads Mikkelsen plays Hannibal Lecter, and he does a phenomenal job. Also, the the type of kills that they were able to, and crime scenes they were able to get away with in that on regular cable is insane, in my opinion. Uh, it's, it's good. I've only watched through the first season, but I really liked it. I will be going back. So yeah, so they have Pusher, and then there's two and three. Uh, other than Mads Mikkelsen, I don't see any other big names. And it looks like Mads Mikkelsen's only in the first two. Nicholas Winding Refn. Winding Refn. I'm not a huge fan because I legitimately hate, 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 hate his movie Only God Forgives. Terrible, awful, disgustingly awful film. Poorly written, poorly acted, just garbage, 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 garbage. And Ryan Gosling was in it, and from what I understand, that film was done just to teach Ryan Gosling how to direct. And then what came out of that? The film Lost River that Ryan Gosling uh, starred in and directed, and I don't know if he wrote it or not, but that also sucked. That was terrible. It, those two were, were instances of style over substance, which I really hate style over substance, which I know I'm ranting a little bit right now, but the movie Mandy is the same thing because Panos Cosmatos is just like Nicholas Winding Refn. Uh, Re Winding Refn. God, it's hard to say fast. And it's just like, it gets me. It gets me every time with these directors, these writers slash directors who are just like, I'm just going to make it look so good. I'm just going to make it look awesome. And they're just like, eh, whatever about the story. Although I will say with Mandy, there is an interesting story there. It's just a story that only needed an hour, not two hours. And I will concede the film looked really good, but when you're making things that slow and the story doesn't, support a pacing like that it's just not good in my opinion but nicholas winding refn is a very similar person and only god forgives is so terrible and what came out of that lost river is also so terrible actually better than it's better than only god forgives but it's still not good um the only thing that i have seen of his that i really did enjoy and a lot of people did was drive with uh, ryan gosling in it i think it was drive I'm getting mixed up between Drive and Baby Driver at the moment, but I'm pretty sure it was Drive. Had an awesome soundtrack, looked great, pretty good. That one's slow, but not too slow for what it was. So, I don't know, but I won't be watching that. So anyway, that those are the main updates. Uh, every month, Shudder's putting stuff up, so hopefully I'll be able to provide these videos each month prior, since I am getting their press releases now, and any other cool stuff that's coming up. But, if there are any big takeaways from this, it's really just one. The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs. It's funny. It's fun. It's educational. It's everything. Anyway, thank you everyone for checking this out. Put some comments down here. Let's talk about some nerdy stuff. What are you excited about that's coming in April? What are you excited about that's on Shutter now? Also, if you could, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not subscribed. Um, yeah, and uh, hit that notification bell if you want to know every time a video goes up. Thank you once again, and until next time, keep it brutal.